This is a video about flies in my attic and how I let them fly out of the window. This is a window in my attic on 9 July 2016 near Albany, New York, USA. Sadly, you can see a graveyard of dead insects on the windowsill. You can also see flies of some kind buzzing around. I'm unsure of the identity of these flies. They look like they could belong in one of these two categories. When I Google the phrase attic flies, I mostly come up with pages about cluster flies. Some photos of cluster flies look exactly like the flies in my attic, such as this and this. But I also see other fly types that also look exactly like the flies in my attic, such as this. Flesh flies may eat dead mice, and my house may have dead mice in it. So maybe these are flesh flies. I'm not sure. This source explains, quote, Often confused with the common house fly, cluster flies are roughly the same size. Some characteristics that differentiate the cluster fly. They fly somewhat more slowly than the house fly. They almost always fly toward windows on the warm side of a structure, and their wings overlap almost completely when at rest. Cluster flies are most common along the northern part of the U.S. and in other countries around the world. They will appear inside homes to overwinter only during the cool fall, winter, or spring months. End quote. Note that the flies in my attic appeared during the middle of the summer, so it's not clear that they came inside to escape the cold. On the other hand, the morning when I found these flies, the temperature had just gotten somewhat cooler than before. Also, the flies that I found didn't have their wings almost overlapping the way that cluster flies are supposed to. The source I was quoting before continues, quote, Cluster flies should not be confused with other medium to large size flies, which may appear suddenly. This may occur when a small animal or bird dies within a wall void. Such flies will find the hidden carcass and lay eggs on it. The eggs will hatch into larvae, maggots, which feed on the carcass. Soon the larvae enter the pupae, cocoon stage, and then eventually hatch out as adults, flies, appearing around windows in the same manner as cluster flies do. End quote. These flies get trapped inside, buzzing against the window all day. Since it makes me sad to see the flies trapped, I let these flies outside. To do this, I open a window. Then I grab a Ziploc bag and try to gently catch the flies in it, one at a time. Sometimes just disturbing the flies is enough, because they find the open window and fly out on their own. Other times I have to keep them inside the bag for a second while I move it to the window, and then allow them to fly out. A full analysis of whether it's better to let the flies outside is complex. Some of these escaped flies will go on to reproduce, thereby creating more new flies that will endure short lives and painful deaths. On the other hand, if these flies don't lay eggs, other bugs, both within and outside of this species, will eat the food that the offspring of these flies would have eaten. The real enemy here is primary production, which provides the food that fuels an ecosystem of suffering. The question is just how to remove that primary production in a way that causes slightly less total animal suffering. Of course, preventing plant growth in the first place is a much more clear and effective way to reduce bug suffering than fretting over the question of whether to let flies out of the attic. Still, I feel bad for these flies and feel an obligation to help. The analysis is further complicated by the possibility that the larvae of these flies might be parasitic. For instance, cluster flies are parasitic on earthworms. Finally, one more factor to consider is the temperature outside. Currently it's summer for me, so the flies I let outside will do fine. But if it's approaching winter and very cold outside, is it better to leave the flies inside? 
that said some people believe that insects may not feel as much pain from dying of cold as a vertebrate would.